The first thing to notice about this exam is that it gives you an enormous amount of time, two hours, and that gives you plenty of time to plan and double check that you've included absolutely everything you want. Before you read any of the extract, read the question first and find out what it is that you need to read for. And I would probably read the question twice. Read the magazine article, it's about Emmanuel. You, Assisted Jean, write a letter to persuade local businesses to donate money to expand the work of the Archway Children's Centre. Then I'll get a bit of extra help. Um, in your letter, you should explain the work of the centre and why it's necessary. Use Emmanuel's story to support your appeal and give reasons why local businesses should support the centre. So one piece of advice I'm going to try, and I've not done this exam um, under exam conditions before, is I'm going to try and annotate the passage. So that bullet point I'm going to annotate in blue. This one I'm going to annotate in red. And then the final one I'm going to annotate in black. And the reason for that is that it will allow me to easily sort through the different information that I've got and then group it, because it might not be grouped in the um, reading material, in the text. It might not all appear in one spot. Um, and so I'm going to see if this will help me. OK, well, having read through the question, I'm then going to go back over it and underline the keywords that will stop me forgetting any particular content. So I'm reading about this child called Emmanuel. And what do I have to do? Well, I'm going to write a letter. And it's a letter to persuade. So if you've watched any of my other videos on persuasive writing, you'll know that I'm going to use a faster crotch here because they're all persuasive techniques. They're all rhetorical. I won't call them a faster crotch techniques because that's just my mnemonic. They will be rhetorical techniques. And now I want them, that's for the purpose of my persuasive writing, to donate money. Um, and... These bullet points I'm not going to underline at the minute. I'm actually going to use them as headings so I know they will be included in my eventual answer. Um, now, when I say I'm using them as headings, I'm, I won't write the headings out. I'll show you. I'll just use these as questions in my persuasive piece. Why will I use questions? Well, that's quite simple. I'm writing a persuasive piece and I know that questioning, particularly rhetorical questions, is a persuasive technique. So I'll turn those into questions when I start to write. Next, I notice that I've got to base my letter on the magazine article. And this could lead me astray because of the next bit of advice, which will be in um, every exam, this instruction, be careful to use your own words. Now, obviously, when I'm referring to the magazine article, my temptation is going to be to quote uh, but I can't do that. I've got to use my own words, so I'm going to highlight that in a bit more of a dramatic colour on my exam paper so I really remember not to go wrong there. OK, so the next thing I need to know is I'm given a start. I'll make sure that I start that way. I only have to write one and a half to two sides in an hour, um, which is incredible. It would take me roughly 20 minutes a side which um, it might take you 25, which means you've got time to play um, to actually plan this or get it right. And then the next thing I notice, which is quite interesting, is that there are 10 marks just being given away for finding the facts um, for these bullet points. Now, these won't be hard to find, uh, so those 10 marks are free. I'm going to get them. I'm going to make sure I nail every single one of them. And uh, after that... I've got 15 marks for the quality of my writing, so I'm going to think what that is in a moment. OK, let's pause here and go to the mark scheme. And this is for the uh, reading element, the 10 points that I'm looking for. And I find that the mark scheme doesn't say I have to get a particular number of points. So it's not like the reading paper. It says I've got to give a thorough perceptive convincing evaluation. So thorough means a lot of points, but it doesn't tell me how many. I've got to read between the lines, which tells me that not all the points will be absolutely obvious. And I've got to show understanding by developing much of the reading material. 
OK, well, what does developing mean? Well, you'll remember from my video on the extended reading paper that it means the thoughts and feelings, um, presumably, of the people in the extract. I'm going to be writing about Emmanuel, but I might also be writing about the business, because remember, I'm going to suggest reasons why uh, businesses should get involved. So as long as I'm developing feelings and thoughts um, of either of those two, I'm going to get the marks for developing. OK, well that doesn't sound too hard in theory, and it's going to get me into band one, so I'm quite encouraged so far. OK, as I'm reading the insert, I'm going to keep the question paper open. Um, here I've just copied the relevant bit so that I remember what colours I'm going to annotate for. Now you can fast forward this bit if you want, but I'm going to read this live and annotate it as I would in a real exam, so you can see exactly what I'd do if I was doing this test. Among the winners at a recent awards ceremony, one 16-year-old student stood out as an inspiring example of how education can transform lives. Emmanuel, a student from an international school in the region, won the top award for art and design. Yet just ten years earlier, Emmanuel had faced a difficult and uncertain future living on the streets. Uh, so I'm going to double check. Uh, the work of the centre, not really. I might just have it transforms lives. Uh, now I'm going to red. Use Emmanuel's story. Um, well, I know he was living on the streets. I'm going to include that. And I know that he's 16 years old. And give reasons why local businesses should support the centre. Well, that's going to be transforming lives again. So I'll just underline that in black as well. And then we go to the next paragraph. Owing to difficult family circumstances, Emmanuel ran away from home when he was just six years old. His parents were not able to look after him because of illness and lack of money. Initially, he begged on the streets of the capital, which exposed him to many dangers and risks of disease. His life changed forever when one day, by chance, and in the hope of a meal, he found himself in the Archways Children's Centre. OK, well, we'll go back to blue. And I now know the name of the centre, so I'm going to underline that. Um, is there anything else about why it's necessary? Um, well, possibly to help young people avoid dangers and risks, uh, and in order to change people's lives. So, change lives forever, I'm going to have that. Um, and also because people have difficult family circumstances, so there's always going to be a need so I'll have that. Next I'm going to have Emmanuel's story. Uh, so ran away from home and he was six years old um, and we know parents were ill and they had no money so we'll have lack of money and he begged on the streets uh, which is very dangerous and risky um, and he was at risk of disease OK, so then give reasons why local businesses should support the centre. Um, well, probably the big thing is uh, risk. They're going to stop young people being at risk of all sorts of um, problems. OK, I'll go to the next paragraph. It was June 1997, and from that moment my life changed, says Emmanuel. Before that, I'd been in a dark room searching for a way out. But then I found a door, and that door was the Archway Children's Centre. No one opened it for me. I opened it myself. Suddenly, after so many years of darkness, I felt as if someone had switched on all the lights. Uh, well, I've got a bit of a problem here. This is all quotation, and I've got to use my own words. Is there anything in there about the work of the centre? No. Is there stuff about his, um, his story? Yes, I suppose there is. There's this idea of him deciding for himself, um, and so uh, this idea of um, self-determination I'm going to have to come up with, um, and so I might just write that here to remind me, self-determination, you'll have better handwriting than me, um, which means that he's taking his destiny into his own hands, but that was all possible because of Archway. Right, next paragraph. The centre is dedicated to empowering street children aged between 7 and 17 years old. It provides them with shelter, medical treatment and clothing, as well as education and numerous other services. 
Their vision is of a country in which all children can enjoy their basic rights to survival, development, protection and participation in society. They believe that every child has a talent and a need for it to be discovered and nurtured. Well, I know immediately that that's all about one thing. It's nothing to do with his story. Um, It's going to give me a lot about the work of the centre. So let's go blue. Um, And so it empowers street children. And they are aged 7 to 17. It gives them shelter, medical treatment, clothing, education and other services. Okay. Um, It's got a vision. So I might mention that. But I think that's more about why the um, businesses should support them, actually. So I'm going to go with black. Um, So businesses are going to help um, create this vision. Uh, Basic rights for survival um, and participation in society. Uh, uh, Going to develop every child's talent and um, nurture it. Okay, I probably don't need nurture. I'll get rid of that. Right. Okay, so now we move on to the rest of the text. The archway provided primary school education for Emmanuel and gave him shelter at home. At school, he discovered a talent for painting that was fostered by Sister Jean, the centre founder. With her help, he secured a scholarship to continue his secondary education locally. Emmanuel explains, Sister Jean recognised that the international school was the only place where I could develop my artistic potential. There I had inspirational teaching and encouragement to aim high. Okay, so I'm going to go with black here. Um, Why should uh, should businesses contribute? Because they're going to have inspirational teaching and uh, they're going to get students into primary school and they're also going to get them into secondary school. Next I'll look at um, Emmanuel's own story and this idea that he had a talent for painting which was fostered by Sister Jean, the centre's founder. Then we move to the next paragraph. Uh, Following his outstanding examination result in art and design, in addition to good grades in other subjects, Emmanuel is now hoping to pursue a career as an illustrator. Sister Jean is searching for a scholarship to enable him to go to art school abroad to continue his studies. He intends to return to his home country at the end of his course to teach art to local children as well as to produce his own design work. Uh, So I've got more reasons for uh, businesses to support. Uh, They're going to pay for travel to the home country. Why should they do that? Because it's going to benefit local children there. Um, And it's also going to continue to educate him. So I've got lots of reasons there. And then we have some great things about his own story. So after the development of art, he's going to pursue a career as an illustrator. And finally, in that paragraph, part of the job of the centre seems to be to find opportunities abroad. So I'm going to underline that. In the next paragraph, Emmanuel is passionate about the Academy Children's Centre and he wants to help other children who are living on the streets in order to show his gratitude for all that the centre has done for him. With this in mind, he contributed his story to a book published to raise money for the centre and to show how lives can be transformed through education. The stories are all written and illustrated by the centre's children. Um, So I've got some work of the centre going on there. Um, They're raising money. Um, They've published a book to do it. Um, and they've done it with the children, so they're empowering them. Um, a bit more of Emmanuel's story. Um, he's grateful, and he's contributed a story to the book. And then I scan over again, and I realise that there's nothing new in here about why uh, businesses should, 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 should support. So I now move to the final paragraph. The number of street children in this country is rising dramatically, and it's estimated that there are 3,500 in the capital alone. Emmanuel says, without the centre's founder and my own efforts, my artistic talent would never have been discovered. I was not only helped to overcome my difficulties, I was given a complete rescue package. I hate to think what would have happened to me, where I would be now, if chance had not directed me to the ever-open door of the archway. Many of the children who were begging with me 
on the street were not so lucky and they became criminals or the victims of crime. Whoever buys the book, which is helping to rescue more street children and opening the door so that they can step into the future. Uh, one day, I want to be able to say that I helped other street children to find out what they're good at. I hope to help them shine. Okay, so there's some more stuff about the work of the centre. Um, massive number of children to help. Um, there's the idea of a complete rescue package. And there's the need to be uh, ever open and always available. Uh, reasons why local businesses should help. Well, the other children who were begging with me are now um, criminals or victims of crime. And so I'm helping a whole generation. Uh, so businesses are all about improving their future and to raise money to cope with the dramatic rise in numbers of uh, young people in need of help. OK, so that's ten minutes out of my hour gone, and it means I still have uh, roughly 50 minutes to write my response. And another way of looking at that is to say that I've, uh, I've spent ten minutes looking for ten marks for the reading, and hopefully I've got everything that I need. Let's double check with the um, exam criteria. OK, let's go through them one by one. Uh, yes, it uh, saves children, prevents children from becoming involved in crime, gives them a future, changes lives, nurtures talents, provides a full range of shelter and support, uh, believes children have a right to a place in society. No, I didn't get that one. Number of street children on the rise, published a book. So I've got uh, only one of those missing. Uh, and by the way, I didn't read this before um, I looked at the paper. I did this like a real exam. Uh, turned up at the age of six, showed early talent for painting, adapted to international school education. Maybe, I probably haven't got that. Excellent in art, yes. Wants to become an illustrator, yes. Intends to return to his country, yes. Committed to helping others, um, but maybe not develop their artistic skills. So um, I've missed definitely one bullet point there. Um, reasons for business to support, uh, they need the financial support, children with talent and dedication need further education that the centre can't give, yes I've got that when I'm talking about the uh, primary, secondary school and international school. There are many other young adults like Emmanuel, well I've got that with the rising number of homeless people. Uh, business benefit from publicity gained, now I haven't added that in, so this is the sort of thing that's reading between the lines, that's not actually in the passage. Um, commerce has a moral obligation to help the underprivileged. Again, this is reading between the lines and not in the passage. And businesses benefit from increased education and skill levels in the local community. Again, which is not in the passage. So now we can see that the, um, the extra marks are given for inference, which, just like in the reading paper, is the third bullet point. And then if we look down the bottom here, you will notice that I began by saying what a fair exam it is, and here's the proof, except all other relevant ideas derived from the passage and relevant to the question. Uh, so there aren't right or wrong answers. OK, before I start writing, it's worth getting to know this exam a little more um, thoroughly. What am I going to be marked on in my writing for these 15 marks that are available? Well... I've got to have my sense of audience, so I'm writing to businesses. I'm going to remember to be formal. I've got to be authoritative. In other words, I've got to really persuade them. Um, that's no problem, because I'm going to use the faster crotch techniques. And that will also take care of my appropriate style. I'm not going to put any jokes in there, for example, because I'm remembering who I'm writing for. Uh, next, I'm going to use varied sentences. And this is something I teach my students all the time. We practice uh, beginning sentences with adverbs or verbs or having short sentences that are uh, three, four or even one word long. Um, we practice having really long sentences that have to be at least 35 words or that contain colons and semicolons and that forces you to have a variety of sentences. But actually the easy shorthand for doing that is just to say one thing to yourself. Start every sentence in a different way. And once you do that, your writing becomes immediately sophisticated and it leaps up into the top band. So start each sentence in a different way and you're going to get into band one. 
Uh, then I've got a strong sense of structure here, paragraphing and sequence. So I'll remember to always paragraph for changes of time and topic. There won't be any talk in this instance because um, it's not that kind of writing. There's no conversation in it. And I'm going to double check everything for error. And then finally, as I would expect, it wants a wide range of vocabulary. Uh, so I'm just going to imagine there's a thesaurus in my head, and I'm going to use it as often as I can. Um, if I'm unsure of a word, I won't use it because I don't want to sound stupid. In my next video, I'll be taking you through how I actually write my answer to the question. And um, I don't actually need to do this, of course, because I'm not taking the exam. But I want to show you what it actually feels like uh, to write under exam conditions. So look out for that. It will be available later today. And please subscribe. Hello. In this video, I wanted to show you what a directed writing question looks like. And instead of approaching this as a teacher, I decided to do it as a student. So I've done the question myself, and I'm going to teach you what I learned. Good luck. You should remember from my previous video that I've annotated the passage in three different colours, one for each of the bullet points in the question, and I'm using this to organise my ideas uh, at the start of this essay. Next, you'll see that I've started Dear Local Businesses, just as the exam paper instructed me. I start with the first bullet point, and I'm simply working through all the things that I've underlined in the passage um, in that colour. Uh, moreover, I don't worry about how many paragraphs this takes. I simply change paragraph each time there's a new topic. I've now moved on to the second bullet point, and again I'm writing in paragraphs. Because I'm holding the iPad in my left hand, I need to take a break here and give myself some support with my jacket. And I'm pointing this out because the discomfort of the exam is temporary. I don't even have to do this exam, but I'm doing it one-handed, uh, as though I were being assessed on it. And this is my bank holiday Monday. This also means that I'm not too worried about presentation. I'm just trying to get my ideas down as quickly as possible. Um, well, obviously I'm an adult, and this 40-minute um, question uh, took me only about 25 to do. But it's important to remember that I haven't become at this good at a question simply by being older. I'm not as intelligent as many of you taking this exam. In fact, my main advantage over you is that I know what hard work looks like and I just get on with it without worrying. Pain is temporary. OK, now you'll see me turn to my um, question paper and I'm ticking off all the points that I've managed to put in I'm putting a circle around the things that I haven't yet included in my answer. This is a vital double check. This means I now choose a footnote, one, and that's where I want to insert the extra information. And now I write one again on a new page, and I enter all the information that I'd want to fit in. Um, this means I'm aiming for 100%. And this is an approach I take to any exam in any subject. I always aim for 100%. And I use every single second of the exam time in order to try to achieve that. Right, that's the 15 marks for content taken care of. Now I want to make sure that I get all the marks for the writing content, 5 out of the 20. Here I've highlighted the words I use to begin each sentence. And my reason for doing that is simple. I want to make sure that I've started each sentence in a different way. And that gives my writing great variety and it makes it original so that again I'm aiming for 100%. In addition you will also see that this has caused me to start many sentences with connectives or verbs or adverbs. This is something I have practiced particularly in writing with my classes and that forces my answer to be sophisticated because to start with it's difficult to do and then becomes extremely easy. You might also see where I've demarcated things with black lines uh, to show where one bullet point ends and the next one starts. And I think if you want to make your sentence variety obvious to the examiner, you can use the highlighters to do it, just as I have as well. So, good luck! OK, let's make a start then. 
So this is to help you through the first question, the most difficult one, in Friday's writing exam. Okay? Question one asks you to do two things. Uh, it asks you to write and it asks you to read. Now, as I'll show you, the reading marks, these ten for reading marks, are actually given away to you. This is a super fair exam. And the whole point of this exam is to give you credit for what you can do. We're going to start by looking at the 15 marks for writing. So this is what the instructions are to the examiners. All examiners are instructed that alternative correct answers and unexpected approaches must be given marks. The reason that's so important it means you can't be wrong. If you've read something and interpreted it your way, as long as you can back that up, you will get the marks. This is an incredibly fair exam. It's much fairer than the OCR. Then, the second thing, it has a tiny little warning, the content must be clearly related and derived from the passage. So you will get a passage, and you can't just make stuff up. You have to have used the passage to come up with your answer. Okay. I'm going to start in reverse order and show you what you get a low mark for. You notice the marks are in bands, not in grades, so I can't tell you precisely what grade that would be, but it wouldn't be a C. So it's useful for us to think, well, what is it that's going to stop me getting the C? Well, it's going to be inconsistent in style, and you're going to have to write something for a particular audience. And if you're not addressing that audience, if that audience won't get what you're writing, it's inconsistent. Badly constructed sentences. So if you haven't thought about the sentences, you'll drop marks. Vocabulary is simple. So if you haven't thought about the words that you're going to choose, you'll get low, low marks. Basic structure. Everyone knows to write beginning, middle and end. Basic structure is boring connectives. Now, then, next. Firstly, secondly. Right? Interesting connectives, although, however, nevertheless, on the other hand. So that means use some interesting connectives. Once you do that, your structure can't be boring, you're going to go up a band. Frequent errors, including sentence separation. Now I've added this bit here to translate what sentence separation means, and I get this a lot, using a comma instead of a full stop. So that's one thing, if you use a comma instead of a full stop, you will not get a decent grade in this exam. So if in doubt, use the full stop. Yeah? You have to get that bit right. Now, what you'll find here is that spelling isn't directly mentioned. So you might get frequent errors in spelling, but those aren't as important as the commas one. So the examiners aren't too hung up about spelling. In fact, they're saying your vocabulary is boring because maybe you're worried about trying to spell the right word. So you get more marks for putting the right word in yeah, then spelling it wrong gets marks taken away. So if in doubt, put in the right word. Doesn't matter if you can't spell it, use it anyway. Let's look at the band above. So here, you have taken account of the audience, but not very well. So you're possibly sitting there thinking, well, hang on, if I'm writing a letter to a head teacher or to a parent, I can probably do that well all the way through. Yeah, and if you can, you're going to go beyond band three. Uh, the examiners don't make any content on the style of your writing or how fluent it is. And in other words, your writing doesn't have to be that good as long as you're trying things out. Uh, how are you going to try things out? Well, number four says you're going to use correctly constructed sentences. That same rule, making sure your commas are in the right place. With correctly constructed sentences, you are going to want to use commas but correctly. Five. Vocabulary may be plain but adequate for the task. So here, you're trying to use the right words. You might not always pull it off, it might still be plain. But you're trying to use the right words, you're getting into band three. So this is probably where we imagine the C grade might be. Yeah? Hopefully, I'm showing you that it's not that difficult to get the grade C. I have to bear in mind who I'm writing for. I don't have to be particularly stylish or brilliant at writing. I don't have to be particularly fluent. Again, brilliant at writing. 
Now I'm going to structure it with decent sentences. I'm going to get my commas right. Now I'm going to think of the best words that I can. I'm not going to worry about the spelling. Mostly quite well structured. Thinking back to my connectives again. However, although, because, nevertheless, on the other hand, those sorts of connectives will force the examiner to say it's well structured. There is one way of getting the structure wrong, and I see this a lot when I look, especially at Tom. People who forget to paragraph. If you don't paragraph, it's not well structured. Now you all know how to paragraph, but it's remembering it in the exam when you're under stress. So when you go into the exam, I would write on the top of your page, paragraphs. The next word I'd write is commas. The next word I'd write is although, because, however, on the other hand. And I'd have that as a mental checklist right on my page so that I knew I was going to use those. When I finish talking, I'm going to ask you to write those down. Okay? Uh, Alright, so I've got to paragraph it, but there is no examiner comment on sequence. In other words, if I took something that's paragraphed, chopped it all up, put it back together again, if the sequence isn't very good, I could change the order and it wouldn't matter. The examiner will still give you the mark. If the sequence is really good, it goes back in the same order I got it in. Because you couldn't rearrange it a different way because of the way you've written your paragraphs. So amazingly, I can get into band three with stuff that's not that well written. However, and I put it in purple, errors are minor. So we don't want many mistakes. Or, if you've made a mistake, it's a spelling mistake because I can still understand the word, but it's not a punctuation mistake, which changes the meaning of your writing. So this is the examiner saying, Pay attention. Punctuation, accuracy of punctuation is really important here. Get that right. The good news is, you have one hour to write a maximum of two sides. One hour for two sides. That is amazing. But the reason for it is, they expect you to write your two sides quite quickly. Half an hour, 40 minutes. And then 20 minutes, I'm not exaggerating, 20 minutes to go back and think, got to get my, my mistakes to be minor. I'll still make some mistakes, but I've got to get rid of every single one I can possibly find. And that checking is going to make sure you get the least into this band. Right, let's see how we do higher up the bands. So, this is band two. We'd imagine grade B must be there. Well, what do I have to do? Well, I'm still writing for my audience. Yeah, for my head teacher or my parent, what have you. Mostly secure. Sometimes I might even make a mistake there, put in some language that's too friendly, but the examiner is going to say, that's okay, because it's still mostly, it's not all the time. There is evidence of style, so you're now starting to think, what would that head teacher or that parent want to hear from me? How am I going to use the right words to really persuade that person? And that's where style is. Who's it written for? I've got to persuade them. They're the ones I've got to impress. Fluency is the same as style. Sentences are effective. We well, all write in sentences, don't we? So that's probably going to come easily to you. Vocabulary is effective. Again, you reach for that right word. Yeah? I want to moan about the state of school dinners. Moan isn't the right word. I want to complain about the state of school dinners. That's a good word better word? I would like to protest about the school dinners that we are fed at Chipping Camden School. Yeah? So you're thinking about the actual words. Usually, those words will be your verbs, your doing words. Moan, complain, protest. Yeah, your doing words, if you're thinking about them, you'll get that. Your vocabulary will be effective. Secure overall structure. Can anyone tell me the connectives that I keep banging on about? Let's have one each. Uh, however, uh, on the other hand, also. I didn't say also. Oh, no, didn't also is banned. I've never mentioned also. However. We've had it. Um, therefore. I didn't mention it, but you're right. Therefore. 
Yeah, reach for those connectives and you will have a secure overall structure. I allow you one also. But the reason why, if we go back, simple vocabulary, that's also, also says this is simple to an examiner. Yeah, because can we have a more complex word for also? In, add, it, in addition, this sounds like a stupid dance. In addition means also. Another one beginning with M. <laughs> it's got over at the end of it. Begins with over. More over, thank you very much. Now I look quite so stupid on the video. Okay. Um, so, Tom, why did I say that? What did I want you to avoid? Simple word. Brilliant. And in particular, which word? Also. Thank you. Uh, okay. Mostly well sequenced. Again, if we're talking about the, the chopping up, most of the paragraphs will be, be arranged in that order. Um, it's very easy, for example, if you've made a point here, and then you've said however, and made a new point here, you can see how the however point has to go with that point, doesn't it? It wouldn't fit anywhere else in, the, in your writing. So using those connectives forces you to be well sequenced. And then again, Writing is mainly accurate, so you can make spelling mistakes and still get a B. You can still get into band two. So let's look at the top band. What do you have to do there? The person that I'm writing for, I do it with every single word. I'm consistent all the way through. It fits that person. It's authoritative. That means I sound like I really know what I'm talking about. I use the language of the expert. Uh, it's fluent. Well, that basically means I've connected it really well, my language is brilliant, my sentences are brilliant. So fluent is only repeating the other stuff that we've got here. Varied sentences. In my lessons, we practice lots of different ways of varying sentences. Starting a sentence with an adverb, an L-Y word. Suddenly, amazingly, surprisingly. Starting a sentence with a verb, a word that ends in I-N-G. Stumbling into the canteen, I notice the mess everywhere. Now you start a sentence with a verb. It's a, a variety of sentence. Starting a sentence with a connective. Although I didn't feel well today, I still came into school. It gives you a bit of variety. Another one is the type of sentences. You've probably been taught in your persuasive writings to use rules of three, patterns of three. I woke up this morning. Uh, put on my best outfit, sprayed myself with cologne, but forgot that I hadn't washed. Here you have a list of three things that gives your sentences some, some interest and variety. Having a one to three word sentence. Oh my God! Exclamation mark. Yeah, it brings the reader to attention. You can do, um, have quite a lot of effects like that. You can have like a single sentence Single word sentence. Boring. Full stop. New paragraph. Yeah, you can play with the idea of sentences. Oh gosh. And I have got videos on YouTube that show you how to do that. Uh, a wide range of vocabulary. So we've talked about that before. Choosing the best words all the time. A strong sense of structure. So now when I chop those paragraphs up, they go back in the order you wrote them. Because of the way you've written, those connectives are absolutely spot on. Virtually no error. Realistically, most candidates are going to make mistakes. So you could say, well, they're not going to get the A or the A star. However, that's only 0.8 out of 13, 15 marks. So I might get 13 because I've got the other things. That's really encouraging. It's a really clear exam. Bear in mind my advice earlier though, you will finish this question after 40 minutes, but you're given an hour. 20 minutes to make sure you've got no mistakes. 20 minutes to go back and think, actually I could change some of these words. 20 minutes to circle the first word of each of your sentences. Oh, I started three words with I, three sentences with I. That's boring. I'm going to change two of those sentences. Oh, I started three sentences with the word then. I'm going to get rid of the word then in two of those sentences. 
oh, I've started one of my sentences with the here, another one starts with the here, another one starts with the here. I'm going to change two of those sentences. Again, I teach all my students, if you start every sentence with a different word, I know that sounds ridiculous, but it works, start every sentence with a different word, you will be doing that, you will be doing that, you will be doing that. Yeah? It's very simple to do. And you've got time in the exam to go back and change. The perfect exam answer is messy. It looks a bit like that. And you will have stuff crossed. This isn't an exam answer. I just nicked it from the table, okay? But you'll have crossings out and things that you've changed. The examiner wants to see that. You've improved your work. You were trying to do this. Trying to do that. Yeah? Mess is allowed. As long as the examiner can read it, because you're trying to improve it. You can take a paragraph, cross it out, and rewrite the whole paragraph if you want. You've got time. Yeah, so that is my message to you. Use that time, and you can't go wrong in this exam. Okay, so that is the writing part of question one. Now I'm going to tell you about the reading part. And I began by saying that the reading marks, of which there are ten, are pretty much just given to you. Let's see what I mean by that. Um, well, this is a lower band. Select points from the passage. Yeah, I can do that. Read a passage and pick out a few points. Rather literally. All right, so I might just pick out a few facts. Uses the material thinly. So it doesn't use many facts from the passage. Well, I reckon I could use more than a few facts. I'm imagining is what you're thinking. So you're going to get higher than this. Does not combine points into a connected response. Ah, so what does the examiner mean? I might have a fact here, fact here, fact there. They all come from the passage, but they're not combined. Yes? Doesn't link them to the question. Excellent, doesn't link them. What have I been teaching you several times to show you how to link them? Ah. Though, however, therefore, because, consequently. Yeah, so if you use those connectives, you must be linking, which is Tom's translation of combine. You must be combining. You can't get in band four. You must be higher. That all comes from the connectives. Let's go up to the next band. Reproduces a number of points. Oh, okay. Four, maybe? I pick four things from the passage. They have to put me in band three. Four things is better than just select points. Well, that's easy, isn't it? I've got an hour in this exam. And by the way, the passage is just a piece of A4. I'll show you a piece in a minute. It's not long. So, yeah, I'm going to get four facts. No problem. Or more. The response covers the material adequately. May miss opportunities to develop it relevantly or at length. Oh, OK. So, if I write less than two sides, maybe I'm not going to get the marks. But the examiner does say you can write one and a half to two sides. So I'm going to write at least one and a half. If I write at least one and a half, I've probably met that. I've used my connectives well. I've got at least four points. I'm going to ace this exam. Band two. Some evidence of evaluation. Okay. Let's go back to my connectives. Some of the connectives I gave you force you to make a judgement where you say one thing is better than another. Can you think of a connective that will force you to make a judgement? Yes. On the other hand. Good. Yeah? Point number one. On the other hand, point number two. Now I'm making a judgement. I must be evaluating. Can you give me another one? Although. Although. Although, blah de blah de blah, I think, blah de blah de blah, I've evaluated. Yet, yeah, however, we'll also do the same thing. So if you use those connectives, you are evaluating, you are at least in band two, you must get into the B grade, even if your other stuff isn't so good. So the connectives have counted twice. Your writing mark, your reading mark. Golden for you. Bonus points. Right. Engaging with a few of the main points with success. 
So you've taken your four facts from um, the passage that you've read, and you've developed a couple of them. That will that will work there. Uses reading material to support the argument. So let's imagine that you had to write about school dinners, and one of the the passage that they gave you was about a fictional school where these year seven children were complaining about their food. Yeah, if you wrote your answer writing down what you think about school dinners, you would fail that. Why? Because you've got a passage that tells you about this year seven in this other school, what they think about school dinners. So you would have to use that the reading material in front of you. So the warning there is, don't just write what's in your head, don't just write your opinion, give opinions from the piece that you're reading. Occasionally effective development. So that, again, is finding the facts in the piece, thinking about them, but not brilliantly, because you've only done it occasionally. So what do we need for the top band? Okay, I've got to be convincing. So my therefores, my howevers, my all those, got to have really good points with them. I've got to read between the lines. So my uh, seven child might be complaining um, about the food, but I might realise that actually this person is only complaining because they want chips and chocolate every day. Yeah? And so reading between the lines, I don't have to take too much of that child's complaint seriously. What I've got to do is educate them about a proper diet. Yeah? So reading between the lines is you look beyond the words. You ask yourself, now what's really going on here? What's in that kid's head or what's in that person's head? You've all practiced that for your literature coursework. You can all do that. What's in that person's head? That's interpret, that's reading between the lines. Um, okay, shows understanding by developing much of the reading material. So I take the evidence from what I've read. I put my own ideas with it. I'm developing. Integrating it into the response to the task. So I might write six paragraphs. In each one of those paragraphs, I'll have some evidence that I've taken from the text, plus my own idea. Yeah, I've joined them together. The ideas from the text, my ideas, put them together, I've integrated. Now that's only four paragraphs, isn't it? Imagine I had six fingers. Shouldn't be hard, we live in Gloucestershire. Yeah, never mind. Six fingers. Six paragraphs. So... That's what question one would look like. Read the magazine article opposite about a street child called Emmanuel who has achieved educational success. <laughs> okay. You are Sister Jean. Write a letter to persuade local businesses to donate money to expand the work of the Archway Children's Centre. So, if you remember, we talked about the audience. Yeah? to get into the top band. So who's my audience? Local business. Brilliant. I've got to persuade that audience. Yes, I've got to come up with really brilliant reasons. Why? What sort of language am I going to use to persuade local business people? Any offers? Let me rephrase the question. If I had formal language that you'd find in the Times newspaper at the top of my board, and informal language that you might use in an argument at home, down here, what sort of language would you use? You're going for the top. That's it, you're thinking. Yeah, many students say to me, posh words, so I'm going to use yeah. put here. So I'll say, why not? You understand what that means? That means, be as posh as you can. <laughs> Simple as that. Be boss, you'll get the marks. Um, okay, I'm going to ask you to look at that bit. What is the thing I've actually got to persuade them about? It's donut money. Okay, that was easy, wasn't it? Yeah, but you'll be surprised. In the exam, students often forget what they're actually trying to persuade. Okay, so that tells you who your audience is, and you've already seen that gets you into band one. This exam is so helpful, they give you even more tips in the question. So that's the next bit of your question. That's actually on the question paper. In your letter, you should do these three things. Explain the work of the centre. 
why it's necessary, use Emmanuel's story to support your appeal, give reasons why local businesses should support the centre. Which one of those are you going to use your connectives with? I mean, you might say all of them, yeah, but there's one that jumps out, which is the one where you've got to use loads of connectives. Reasons. Good. With your reasons, yeah? <laughs> Most importantly, moreover, in addition, however, alternatively, on the other hand, with your reasons, yeah, so the examiner is actually making this easy for you, because by telling you to do that, the examiner is forcing you to use connectives, which is forcing you to have varied sentences, which is forcing you to get into the top bands. So those connectives suddenly become really, really easy ways to get marks. Which bullet points are you going to have to get reasons from the texts in? So you're going to read this text. Yeah, you've got three bullet points. Where are you going to get evidence from the text? Which bullet point? Using Manuel's story. Good. So that's all going to be about him, isn't it? Yeah, and possibly in a different part of the text, there'll be what the centre does. Very easy for you to find, yeah? You only need a few examples, one in each paragraph, and you're going to get the grade. Now, not only does the examiner give you all that help, there's a third bit of help they give you. Oh, well, I've just highlighted what the keywords were that we've just discussed. We didn't miss any of those, did we? So, then it says, base your letter on what you've read in the magazine article. Don't just tell me what's in your head and your opinion. We won't get the mark. Base it on what's in the magazine article. Be careful to use your own words. Yeah, that means I don't take a sentence out of here and copy it into my answer. Try to use my own words. Don't copy. Are you allowed to use quotation marks if it says that? No. No. Use your own words. Don't use quotation marks. Right. Amazingly, it says, this is how I want you to start your letter. Actually tells you how to start. Dear local businesses. Then it reminds you, as I have, you only have to write one and a half to two sides, which should tell you how long have I been saying? 40 minutes. Which leaves you how long to check? 20 minutes. Good. Um, up to 10 marks are available for the content of your answer. That's the reading mark. And 15 marks for the quality of your writing, which we looked at before. So... I hope I've shown you that the examiners are actually giving you the marks away. All the information you need to answer this is in the passage, and all the skills are really easy to do. Hurrah. Okay, let's recap then. I need two connectives each, and we'll do one at a time. On the other hand, however. Oh, sorry, I said one at a time, but you've used your two lives. So that makes it harder for you guys. The one instead of also. Oh no no. In. Ends with a. Ends in shun. In addition, I'm coming back to you though, which is the other one that means in addition and also? Um, is it, it is. Oh, I feel good now. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, got me one? Come on, give me another one. Did you say however someone said that? Yeah. yeah. So someone said on the other hand. Uh, cool, you can stop filming now.